Disa për ju që është kujdesëm edhe më kujtojnë të kjo pjesa. Pra ndodhë diska që kur unë vazhë dhe leksionin, shkrimi, mënyrës e sirë registrohet, shkrimi dhe left, right, shiftet. Ok, so let's continue again. So, until now, we did, we have done the, we started to cover the electrostatics and we call it electrostatics because it's not changing as a function of as a function of time, so we are time static, that, that's what we mean with it. And uh, we start from the postulates. Okay, the postulates that we used, they were, uh, they were just the, the divergence of D. So what are the postulates that we all, always provide? We give one divergence and one curve, okay? So we give one divergence and one curve, and uh, the divergence of D, this was equal to the charge density, to the rho, okay? And the curl of E, this was equal to zero. So these were the initial postulates that uh, we assumed when we started, started electrostatics. Now, this is how we always start, right? So these are postulates, they are unquestionably correct. And uh, what we do from here is that we apply uh, uh, who can tell me what is the Helmholtz theorem? Charge theorem and Helmholtz. So Helmholtz theorem is a theorem which states that we we know correctly a field if we know its divergence and its curve. Okay, so which means that if we have an electric field, we first look for its divergence and then we try to identify what is its curve. If we can find the expressions for both. That means that we know every aspect of E. Now, this is where we started for electrostatics. What was the next step? The next step, we applied the divergence theorem. Okay? So we got this. And we integrated this over volume, and we got something. And then from here, we applied uh, Stokes theorem. Stokes theorem, it takes this curve, okay? It takes this curve and integrates this over surface area, right? So this was the divergence theorem, and this was equal to uh, some, uh, if you ever forget what, what the answer is, the answer for sure is going to involve the ds here, and this is going to involve the dl here. And these are both uh, closed integrals, and this is dds, and this side is going to be edl. So this, this is what we did for electrostatics. Now, in magnetostatics, we'll have also two postulates. Two postulates this time, there will be the divergence of B. So if we see here, we started with the divergence of D. Now the divergence of B is equal to zero, okay? That's a given. And we have also that the curl of B, sorry, uh, The curl of B, this is equal to mu zero J. So these are the two postulates. Okay. So in any case, whenever uh, whenever we you think about the magnetostatics or electrostatics, you should know that uh, we start everything from here, and then from uh, from this part, the next the next thing that uh, we do is that we try to apply these formulas, okay? So we take the volume integral of the first and we take the surface integral of the second. So what is the volume integral of uh, the diverse of B? This is going to be equal to... Uh, what is this equal to? So this will be in principle, this will be equal to zero. But at the same time, this is BDS, this is zero, which means that the magnetic field flux over on an enclosed surface area, this is zero. And uh, the, this means that if we have planet Earth and the magnetic field, it propagates from one side to another. Okay, so let's assume that these are the magnetic fields of Earth, okay? And we are sensitive to this magnetic field of Earth. It is relatively small. But let's assume that we get down a box, okay? We get a box, and this is a, a box that looks like this. This means that the magnetic field of Earth that is moving like this, 
and like this. This the the surface flux or the surface integral of this b over this enclosed surface is going to be zero. Okay, and this is also this also means that we don't have a magnetic monopoles like the charges, like we have the, the one proton or one electron for magnetic fields that uh, does not happen. I see that there are a couple of comments. Let me have a look. Okay, uh, yes, for the attendance, can you press one? I mean, all of you that are present in the class. And uh, so this is how we start. Then the next topic, the next thing that we do is that we, we apply the Stokes theorem, right? The Stokes theorem is like something like this. So we say that the curl of B, ds, this is equal to B dot dl. Okay, and this is equal to uh, the integral of the integral of mu zero j. But this mu zero j, this is okay. Now, uh, J, this is a quantity that we have not defined it yet, but J, this is defined as the current per unit area. Okay? So if we have a wire that has a radius of two, two centimeters, okay? and the, the current flowing, if the current flowing, it's uh, 14 amps. And uh, uh, can you tell me what could be the highest Current that you use in your homes, some of the other women maximally check in in the perspective. The pipes at the stop yaka. I'm on the other perspective. Also, Jennifer, some room to reach Caricus cellular. Here's the pipes that see that we grow up with it. Okay, so what is the current that it goes through the so the current in our appliances at home, they are in the order from 1 to 10 amps, okay? This is how much current we have. Normally, the cell phone chargers, they go up to zero, from 0 0.5 amps to 1. But let's assume now that we have a current which is 14 amps, the diameter, the radius is 2 centimeters. That means that the current density, which has a unit of amp per meter square, this is equal to 14 over uh, pi r squared. R is 2, so this is times 4, so this is equal to 14 divided by 4, it's 14 over 4 pi amps per uh, centimeter square, okay, which is 4 pi. So this J, this is units of, the unit of current over meter square, okay. Now here, I want you to, to be a little careful. So this current is the current which flows through the cross-sectional area of a, of a wire. Let's assume that this is the wire, and the current density is the current divided by this surface area that we observe here, okay? But now, let's think for a moment. I, I want you to think about this one. Let's, let's assume that I have a metal, a coaxial cable, and the current is not flowing through a wire like this, but through a very thin uh, metal piece. If you go home, you can find very thin uh, conductors, which is an aluminum foil. Aluminum foil, it is sometimes much thi little thinner or as thick as a piece of paper. But the piece of paper, it does not have, it has only one dimension, okay? So if the current density here is defined at amps per meter square, how do you define the current that flows over an, uh, over an aluminum foil? Can you give an answer regarding this? So you have a wire like this, it's thick, right? You have a look at it and uh, you can calculate an area. But what do you do here? So how, how can you uh, be able to write down a current density which, if we multiply with the relevant dimension, we get amps. Chinese here, we current density, which is the aluminium. 
a do të të me tërgatëror? Jo me tërgatëror së mund tjetë, sepse letra është ashe hol, letra të kërë shikojmë këtu në, kjo është ka një dimension, nuk ka të rashësi. Shiko, ju du të qeni të, kjo për shumë, kjo është e teli, kjo current density, po e shumë këtu, this is current density. Për dhe nëse në mund të provizojnë një cross-sectional area të telit, telit mund tjetë telit bakë, mund tjetë dhe një milimetri trash, për pratë një milimetri masë, në shpira ka troj gjenjë. Por, në që se kemi, shiko, për gjenjë të tjetë relativisht e dhe, this is the J over volume, ok? The current density over volume, it's M per meter square, and the J on the surface, the unit is M per meter. Okay, so this is the unit of the current per, you, per if you have a very thin wire, okay? Which means that if you are given a current like 10 amps and you have an aluminum foil, you go to the kitchen, you make aluminum foil like this, you connect through a, through a battery, and the current that is going to flow, or the current density, it, you can find the current, because you can divide the potential with the resistance. You find the current and you divide by, the, by this parameter, okay? So I, I want you to draw this one. So draw this one as an exercise, okay? So this is your wire, and let the, the, let the aluminum foil have a radius of uh, two centimeters. But the aluminum foil is, is long two meters, okay? So this is two meters long and two centimeters, and the current is flowing like this. So if the current is 10 ampere, what is the current density over this? Give me the numbers. So the current density, it will be 10 amps, which is the current flowing through this uh, aluminum foil. And you divide this one by 2 pi times r. r is 2 to the power minus 2. 10 to the power minus 2. Okay, assume that I, we are converting this in meters. Okay, so here we have 10 to the power minus 2 times 10. This is 10 to the power 3 divided by 4 pi. This is m per meter. Are we good? Okay, now uh, we did, but let's be careful. We are going to divide it with this length because the current is flowing in this direction, okay? We don't multiply with, with this length, which is two meters. We have to be careful about this one. But we can have also something like this. Assume for a moment that uh, you have a wire, you have a wire, or you have, imagine us with the letter, the letter of the and the embedding shtu. Shtu se embedding shtu, por nuk i takojmë të dy cepat, vidi një të të dhe rrima më të ndohë që rrët të. Pa në që se rrima rrët këte, më kuptoni pra për gjatë këti boshtit, atërë du të përdojmë të parametrin që shpingull me kalimin e rrimës, dhe akor? Arsye që the reason that I'm asking this one a little with the attention is the following. What is an infinitesimal if we think about cylindrical coordinate systems? So I want the input of, of uh, any one of you. So let's assume we know in cylindrical coordinate systems that we have a radius r, right? We have, a, we have the angle phi, which goes like this, and we have the z, which goes like this, right? And let's assume for a moment that we have a, a cylinder that is standing like this. Now, in the current, if i is equal to i a z, what is the dimension that we have to multiply the current density? Or let's give this one j is equal to j is a z. So it looks like when, once you see this, this thing, it looks like the current is going upward. That's good. So if we want to find the current, then we have to multiply with infinitesimally small distances. Okay? So i it should be equal to j dot product, okay, we have a dot product, 
with the DL. Okay, and in this case, let me think for a moment. So in this case, this term So what do we mean here? If the current is flowing A5, so you could have a current which is flowing around like this, right? In the if, if this is if this is the case, the current and I it should be equal to J times dz. I should charge your piece. But Tony Prime, just a little more in there. In fact, for current density points and project as it is for the J to remove to. Ne të shikojmë cila me dojnë të formë. Në qësë nërrimë më shumë nërë. Ku mund të vendosim barrierë që rrimë më skalojmë? Barrierë e vendosim të unë. Që të tot është është një segmenti këtu. Në ndryshe, në qësë nërrimë më ecën në visi për faqe në kanaqës të Coca-Colas, i di e rrimë më ecën në të dritje. Si mund të ndalojmë në të rrimë, e ndalojmë që nëse bëjmë një barrierë të unë. Po kjo vetë që është? Kjo është delta z but if the current density it is A5, which means that it rotates like this, the current itself, which is amps, it should be J times DZ. If this is the other case, you take a note, and this is what uh, you should be going after. Now, we see so far that the... So we did a, a small this, uh, review of what is the current density. But we are not done yet here, so it looks like we took the Stokes theorem. Stokes theorem, it takes this curve and uh, it writes it like this, but at the same time, this is mu zero j ds. This mu zero, it's a constant, so we can take this out of the integral and we get j ds. What is j ds? This is the current density times the surface area, which finally means that, let's write this one here, Finally, it means that the VDL, this is equal to mu zero i, okay? So this is what we get. But how did we get this? We got this one from the curl of B. Curl of B was mu zero i, and then the divergence of B, it was equal to zero. And then from here, we got the flux integral of BDS, this was equal to zero. So here we have the two postulates of uh, magnetostatics. So these are the postulates in differential form. So they are more or less the same expression. And these are the, the postulates in integral form. Okay, so these are differential form and integral form. And from here, we can, uh, this is a very important law because this helps us to find the magnetic field for different uh, systems. Now, let's see an example. Uh, So let's assume that we have a wire which has a radius of, uh, of B. So the radius of this wire is B. And uh, this wire, it carries a current. Uh, let's see what is, what is the number I. This is given. The question is, let's find the magnetic field as a function of R. B is equal to BR. This is the question. And uh, to solve this one, we assume that uh, we are going to have synthesis as a function of R, we need to define a reference frame, right, or a zero location. And for this, 
we assume the middle of the wire. Okay? And then we have two regions. The first region is when R is larger than P. Okay? Which means that we are outside of the wire. So we are somewhere uh, here. Where at such a distance, this is the R. And we try to find the magnetic field. So what we can do is we can use this expression, which states that the line integral of B dot PL, and these are both vectors, is equal to mu zero I. And this I, this is the enclosed I, okay? And this law, this is very similar to another law where we had the flux of the electric field. So we had the EDS, okay? This was equal to what? Who remembers this? This would be a question in the, in the midterm. And now you might be asked, answering my question that, oh, what is the midterm? Okay, so let's first answer this one. So what was this? So Q enclosed, this thing for epsilon zero. Exactly, okay, Q enclosed. And now, so it looks like this is the Q enclosed, and uh, here this is the I enclosed. This is the charge enclosed, this is the current enclosed. They are similar in terms of, uh, from this perspective. But now let's apply this one, and uh, for to apply this BDL, it is good. We we can define any circular path that goes like this. Okay, but it is best to draw the the closed the closed uh, loop so that it is equidistant from the center. So let's also consider this, but let's consider this loop, which is equidistant from the center. So in this case, let's not take this extended black one, but let's take this uh, this one in red, and in this, and we get the following. So this is a DL, okay? So for any closed loop, the DL is a tangent line which goes like this. At the point like here, this is the DL, and here, this is going to be the DL. And everywhere, the DL, it has this direction. And the B itself, this is equal to B times A phi. So similarly, this is how they go. And the, when we take the dot product between this B A phi, dot product with a d phi a phi these are equal to mu zero i okay and this a phi dot a phi what is a phi dot a phi so uh, we have the B inside the integral, but we can argue that because of the symmetry of the problem, this B, it may be a constant value, so we can take it out of the integral. At the same time, since the radius of this path is also constant, because we assumed a regular circle, we could have assumed also something more complex, but let this be dr, and here we have d5. So the integral of d phi is uh, is just two pi, okay? Because we know that the integral of d phi is phi itself, and the phi it goes from zero to two pi. So here we get zero to two pi. So in the end we get the b times two pi r. This is equal to mu zero i. Okay. So we found the magnetic field. Uh, at the distance r, but outside of the wire. Now we have to, to consider a different, uh, the other region where r is smaller than b. Now, if r is smaller than b, that means that we will stay in a closed loop somewhere between here and here. Okay, 
And we can draw a loop like this. And then the question, we can uh, write the same problem again, which reports that or writes that BDL should be equal to mu zero times the i. Let's write this as small i, okay? Because once we have a wire, we have some currents that flow uh, in this region. And we can also have uh, currents which flows on the outer regions like this. And now the question is how much current flows uh, in this region of interest? Now, we see that Okay, so uh, we have we can do this one to find the relation. So p pi p square, this is the current pi, which is the total current. And we are asking about pi r squared. This is going to be some small i, okay? And uh, so here, this is going to be equal to mu zero times uh, times this i, which is going to be pi r squared over pi b squared times i. And then these are cancelled out, so we get b times 2 pi r. This is equal to mu zero i times r squared over b squared. And the b is equal to mu zero i over 2 pi times 1 over b squared times r. Okay, and in this expression we get that the b is equal to mu zero i over 2 pi r. Okay, so this is when r is larger than b and this is when r is smaller than b. Okay, so this is how we can find the magnetic field for each case. And now there is also this, that the mu, we can simplify this a little further, because mu is equal to 4 pi times 10 to the power minus 7 times the current i over 2 pi, 1 over b squared times i, times r. Now, assume for a moment that we have a current which is uh, 2, mil 2 milliamp. And the uh, B is one centimeter and R is five millimeter. Can you find the color? So I'm going to see the first student that uh, entered the attendance, Amina Tataria. Amina, can you calculate what is the what is the sorry, not the current, what is the magnetic field given these parameters? So the magnetic field from zero to B, it looks like it is linear with R. So when R is equal to zero, the magnetic field B, which is measured in Tesla, and this is in meters, we have a linear relationship, okay? So we have a straight line. Slope is constant. So the slope of this function, slope, or the functional, it's equal to 
new zero pi over two pi b squared. So this is the of the function. Then after b, we observe that the magnetic field is going to be proportional to one over r. So the first part, so the first part, the magnetic field, it is proportional to r to the power one. And in the second part, the magnetic field is proportional to r to the power minus one. Okay, so do we have an answer? So what is the... This is 50 mu, 50 times mu. Let's have a look. So the mu, this is 4 pi and 10 to the power minus 7. So if we cancel these two, this is equal to 2 times 10 to the power minus 7. Current is 2 milliamps. So this is times 2 times 10 to the power minus 3. So this is the current divided by b squared. b squared is 1 centimeter. 1 centimeter is 10 to the power minus 2. Square is like this, times R. R is 5 millimeter, which makes it times 5 times 10 to the power minus 3. So this is equal to 2 times 2 is 4. Times 5, we get 20. So this is equal to 20. Then we have 10 to the power minus 7 times 10 to the power minus 3, 10 to the power minus 8 times 10 to the power minus 3, 10 to the power minus 11, plus 4, 10 to the power minus 7. Okay, so this is the magnetic field given these numbers. Now, the magnetic field is also, uh, if we draw the graph, this is how the B, it changes as a function of R. Now, let's see another example. Okay, uh, sorry, I was trying to, to fix the... So, let's assume that we have a very thin aluminum foil which has a radius A and uh, so it's going to look something like this, like a, like a piece of paper but the current is going up AZ as, as this one but I, I, I want to ask you again, Chinese senior calculator, what is the unit of this JS? So what is the unit of JS? Andy, that's correct. Okay, M, that, that's correct. So this is the unit. The question is the same. Uh, what is the magnetic field as a function of radius? So we, we look at the problem and we have, this is our current carrying system. And let's assume initially when R is smaller than A. So if R is smaller than A, we have BDL, okay? This is equal to mu zero 
times the current that is enclosed. Now, what is the current? What is the current if we are inside here? So this will be our enclosed path, and our DL is going to be these tangent components, right? Here, and here, and here. So uh, how much current is flowing inside this loop? The current flow inside the loop is zero, okay? Because this is a very thin aluminum foil, and the whole current is different from the previous example, but it's flowing only on the outer surface. So in this case, what we get is that for when r is smaller than a, b is just simply zero. So if we are to draw this here, b will be zero up to the outer radius. Now let's see when r is larger than a, and again we write the same expression. We say b dot dl, which now with this we mean the following, we have, we are out here, and the loop is this. If this is the loop, the dl, there are these tension components like this, okay? And this is equal to mu zero times the current. How much current is flowing inside this loop? So the current of that flows inside this loop, what did we say? So when we started the, the discussion here, we said, uh, how can we find the current? So here, we will write some i. This current, since the unit of j is ampere per meter, we have to multiply with a single, with a meter unit. Okay? not area or anything, and if the current is flowing upwards like this, so this is the current that is flowing on the other side of the sheet. In order to stop this current, or the component which is perpendicular to this, is, is this side, this edge. If you save it, this edge is the edge over which the current is going to flow. So this is going to be equal to Js times 2 pi, a, okay, where A is a constant. Then here we get B times 2 pi R. This is equal to mu zero Js 2 pi A. So these two pi's, they are cancelled out, and we get that the B is equal to mu zero Js times A 1 over R. Okay. So it looks like uh, so where do we start this? When the radius is equal to a, so let's try this one because we have to draw this one correctly. Now here I said a and b, here is b. Let's assume that this air this radius is also b, it doesn't matter, or assume that b is equal to a to compare the drawings before, but let's see. When r is equal to zero, this was a magnetic field, zero, zero, zero. But when r is equal to a, the magnetic field is equal to uh, mu zero js. So it goes like this. Mu zero js. So we have this specific value here. And then immediately it drops similar to the previous one. Okay. So this would be the two magnetic fields for these two different uh, combinations. Okay. Now, the next uh, thing that we'll will mention is the is the following expression. So
So we learned that the divergence of B is equal to zero. But what does it mean that the divergence of B is zero? Just using the vector, if you remember, in chapter two of the, of the book, we had the, uh, the null identities. The null identities, they reported that the, the divergence of a curl of a vector of a vector field is equal to zero. So since this is like this, Okay, so what this states is this, that if we observe that the magnetic field has no uh, magnetic mono monopoles, okay, and the magnetic monopole is anything that does not look like this. So we know that the magnets, we draw them like north-south, but this is, if we even cut this in half, you know how the, the magnetic field will be, but because of this, this looks like there should be a vector A, which, uh, which if we take the, the curl, its curl is going to be the, the B vector. Now, this is true, and uh, so we can define such a vector field, and uh, if we try hard, when I say try hard, there, there are some, uh, some vector calculus properties, which, for example, we know this, but we know also this. So what was the curl of B? The curl of B was mu zero i, okay? Or mu zero j, sorry. This is mu zero j. Because the i, it was to find the B, so this is mu zero j. And then, uh, instead of B, we can write here, this is the curl, this is the curl of A. This is again mu zero j. So, uh, and this, this can be the curl of, an, of another curl. It's a, it's a mathematical operator which involves even the, the Laplacian. So here, we can, let me see, this is the curl of the curl. This is equal to the gradient of the divergence of A minus the Laplacian of A. So this whole thing, this is again equal to mu zero j, okay? Now, if you play uh, a little bit with this expression, what we can find, okay, so there are a couple of steps that we might skip, okay? You are not required to prove this in, in any way, but we can uh, finally get the following expression. So, to prepare me që kishtë një hidhjem të bësë me, me, me kërë density, dhe e përdojrë në atër, në zhjetën të ushtë rime pak përpare dhe e gjetën në rejmë. A një ne do mundohemi, nëse kjo mëtësi fizike eksiston, që se të vektorja eksiston, që kërë qëfar hidhje ka me këtë. Se ne gjithë mund, fushat mundohemi të gjejmë si funksioni burimeve të fushave, për shumë, burimi fushës e vektik ishte nga kjesa, për kemë një proton, një elektron, përdojrë atër për gjetën në fushat, A e që në dodhë, është që burimet e fushës magnetike janë në rrëmat. Pa ku kemi një tejtë që ka në një rrëmë, aty të përët fushë magnetike rrëmë saj. Për shumë tejtët në rrëmë, që, që, që bajnë në rrëmën elektrike nga stacionë e shpërndarë, të dhejnë në përshpia, po të kemi një detektorë, se po të bajnë në magnet afërterit, dhe shikojnë shikoj që magnetit do, do në vjesë, ose busull, po të kemi busull, që shumë sensitive dhe fushës magnetike, uh, mund që kori që lëvizë, bilës për tjeni një busë në shpi, afrojnë apër televizorit ose apër kompjutrit, të shkori që lëvizë për fatë nëse kjo kërë në dërësitë, ose kjo ija, kjo siel vektorin A, ose siel vektorin B, në kërë që qëja që ka qenë charge, charge, this produced potential at B. Now, we can, we can prove that A, this vector, this is equal to mu zero over four pi times the current density j over r d volume. Okay. So this is something that we can derive for the uh, for the a, and this a, the unit is Weber per meter. So this is the unit of the. Uh, 
the magnetic field it's a Tesla but now the this is the, the equation but uh, what we can do there is also something that uh, that we can uh, Now, in, uh, in uh, electromagnetism, sometimes we assume some symmetries, okay, or some specific cases, and uh, in this case, we can assume that the divergence of A is equal to zero. Kjöfer, Kjöfer Emre, Kushti uh, Ikulombi, it's called Coulomb condition. So, if we have this Coulomb condition, if this is zero, imagine for a moment, based on this uh, Coulomb uh, condition, what do we get? We get that this is equal to the Laplacian of A, this is equal to minus mu zero J. Have you ever seen any other expression that looks like this? The Laplacian operator of the potential, it was equal to the rho. Okay, so we used to have such a relationship before. Actually, it was minus rho over epsilon zero. Okay, so this is the Laplacian operator, uh, the magnitude in in uh, so this del operator. This is a dead operator, and the, the dot product of two dead operators that we write like this, this is equal to Laplacian operator. Okay, so this is the terminology that we should know, and I should write them at least once on the board. We get these relationships. Now, what was this equation called? Situated equation only tuna. So, my question is this, what is this equation? Professor Tane, that Poisson, when we talk about zero, that's Laplace. Sure, okay. that's true. So, this equation, the second one, this is called the Poisson equation. And this Poisson equation, if this charge is equal to zero, so if we get, if rho is equal to zero, then we get that the Laplacian of the potential is equal to zero. And this is called the Laplace equation, you are correct. So it looks like these, these potentials, the, the, the V, potential is scalar, the Fuchs semi-thick, the potential is vector R, the Fuchs magnetic, two principal kind of symmetric with this theorem. Check it for you. A bit of a change in the can be in the shoe. Here, as equivalent to the charge density, the mu zero is equivalent to the hyper V permittivity. Okay? Në shumë ekuacione, vëtë e po të ndryshoni këto do e shprejersh, do gjeni shprej në fushës elektrike, po të ndryshoni këto parametrat që në të kratë të fushës magnetike. Ok, so, so this is how uh, we can write, let's say, the vector Poisson equation. The vector Poisson equation, you can even write it like this. So we can say that the, the Laplacian, the Laplacian of Ax, this is equal to minus mu zero jx, okay? The Laplacian of ay, this is equal to minus mu zero jy. And the Laplacian of az, this is equal to minus mu zero jz. And you will only say, should we in chin here, so na na builder, you never let go of room, so it's a double to time here. Uh, in electromagnetism, it's pak vështirë, vështirë, it's pak triki për gjithë drejtimet e fushave. Dhe ajo që nuk dimon neve, është në gjithë mund për gjithë drejtimet e fushës A, dhe shikon si shkon rrima. Për shumë në fusha magnetike, me edhe me informacione që të kemi më përpara, të dimë këtë që në qësë rrima e cënë për gjatë nartë, 
Kur shumë magnetike nga rekun e dorës gjatë, cirkulon, një cirkulis aramën në kërën, në magnetik fil. Pa të rrimë, në qësë e rrimë është kjo, që për shkonë e zëmë kemi një tërë, që shkonë në rrimë është shkonë lartë, që shkonë kemi tërë, që shkonë në tërë në tabatë. Edhe ne bëjmë të pytjen, sa është vektori A këtu? Qëfa dretimi ka vektori A këtu? Për gjithja dojnë direkt, në ke parë komentacione, është vektori A këtu, ka këtë dretim lartë. Po këtu, edhe këtu pra vektori A pra është lartë, pra dretimi në fushës vektori A, e me që njëtë direkt nga joja. Që dhe thot, we can even write it like this, the general expression, the natasion of AI, this is equal to minus mu zero, JI, where I, is 1, 2, 3, is with x, y, z, so it can be any one of, uh, of these. Now, this was the... Uh, this was the symmetry between the vector potential and the scalar potential. Now, if we are going after the symmetries of in, in this area, let's also have a look that the potential, when we were trying to find it using an in integral, this was equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0, which is in fact the k, times the rho dv over i. Okay? So this is the, the solution of this Laplacian equation. So potential is equal to kq over r. Because rho dv in fact is a charge, right? And you also remember from physics in the first year, which is potential equals kq over r. It is as simple as this. So this k is this term, and the rho dv is this q. Now, if this is the solution that comes from here, and again, uh, for the vector potential, we get the following. We get that ax is equal to, let's, let's do the interchange of terms. Joseph h and epsilon 0, so such primitive that for push replica, at the there's an ensemble mu 0. So this should be mu 0 over 4 pi, okay, so we're trying to find the a, times, times jx over r dv, okay. So this would be the equation to write down the a, okay. Uh, yeah. Now, we can also, uh, this is, so these are, these are a pair of equations, you can write them next to each other, this is another pair of equations, you can keep them next to each other because this helps us also to memorize them. But then we can also uh, try to use, I think there is this part, and also this because we already know this, and uh, we can see what is JDV, okay? What is JDV? JDV, this is volume, okay, it's meter cube. So this is L ampere per meter square times meter cube. What, what is this? This is equal to L ampere times meter. Okay, so this is just by looking at the dimension analysis that we see in this integral. We get it here, ampere times meter. So this means that this is equivalent to having a current times a distance. Uh, I hope this part is clear. And the volume, let's assume that you have a wire. Okay? And this wire, what is the volume of this wire, dv? Sign of the limit. The limit to the cumulative surface area. So let's assume this JDV, the linear theory, which is about the cross sectional area of the area, here the area. But check it out. In the year, so here the area. And in the year, so here's the river E. The area is the area. So the top, the year, the area, is the fact, is the volume which is going to be the zone of the area, for the segment of the volume. So now the end of the area. Dhe në të duhet se mund kemi rrima mund të marrë të thesën dhe në e këtu dhe lëja dhe në të dritim dhe kur vim të dhe në lëja dhe në të dritim dhe në e mund të interesojt të kemi masi A që ndodhë dikuftu. Ok? 
Pra, që do të thotë, bashkë për të diskutimi të të fund fare, we get the, the, the expression that A, the magnetic field vector A, it is equal to mu zero i over 4 pi times uh, d l over r. Okay? So this is this A and this is d l. So, uh, what is the difficult part in this problem? So what is DL in this case, if this is part of a circle? If the radius is R, DL in this specific case, so this is over, now DL in this case is E5 or, or D theta, okay? I <laughs> R from the runner control. I am first proportional to the hyper run at this distance. You thought just in our going up, bringing forces, you thought in our going up, we must sing a daily chicken and we must. So I am ulet sing hyper run, which is a push of magnetic event. The ulet sing hyper run control, except that Doya has the rebound to us and have serial well. I must have the piece of Doya. Okay. So this these laws that we see here, this is called the beyond Savart law. Okay, this is the law of Dio Savart. And uh, given this, it might be time to, uh, to have a look at an example. So far, do we have any questions so far? Any beauty? Uh, the next examples that we can uh, go over. Is the actually uh, this morning I shared with you another link where I had a recording where we find the the magnetic moment or the magnetic. So uh, I would suggest you to go to go over that that recording and you can see how we can apply this Gil Savart law. And for today the class it will be only one hour. And uh, but I can get if you have any question, I can receive them now. And the pursuit, when Munta Josegani Pitia, Munta Pursuit.